Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Hawks from Pink Hollybush Designs and welcome back to Make Your Daughter a Dress. Today is lesson four and we are finally going to start sewing. So uh, this whole lesson is going to be about starting to put your bodice together and attaching um, your whichever embellishment to the neckline that you've chosen to do. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we've transferred all of our markings from the pattern to the particular um, pattern pieces. And I don't normally do that until I'm actually going to sew with that particular um, piece. Um, again, that's because I try to avoid using that um, blue marker. I also use um, just a little snip in the fabric as a marking whenever I can. So let me show you how to do that. So I have our two bodice pieces, the front and the backs. And on my um, front bodice, I just need to mark center front. If you see, there's a notch there. And I'm going to mark it at the bottom as well. So the way I'm going to do that is just take a tiny little snip right there in my seam allowance. We have half inch seams, so I'm probably just doing about an eighth of an inch. And I did it on both um, the fashion fabric and the lining. And I'm gonna do that at the bottom as well. All right, now on the back, I wanna mark this center back line, and you'll see that there's a notch there. And I'm also um, going to mark this fold line. And I'm gonna do that the same way, just making couple little um, snips and just double check on your pieces yeah I didn't quite get it through to my lining all the way now I have my interfacing pieces here and um, I'm going to show you as I've mentioned how to interface the whole bodice but before I do that um, I'm going to trim my seam allowances off of my interfacing and that's just to reduce um, the bulk in the seam allowances so it's easier to turn them um, and you'll see it, what I mean as we get to that um, point. If you forget to do this, this is one of those things that's not that big of a deal. Um, in fact, I forget to do it a lot but I'm supposed to be showing you the proper way. So the proper way is to not have the um, interfacing in the seam allowances. And I hope you can see, I'm just going around the edges and I'm trimming off um, that half inch all the way around. Now I had a great question in the Facebook group and that was whether or not you needed to pre-shrink your um, interfacing. And um, the answer to that is it depends. If you're using a knit interfacing, which is what I recommended, um, then you do not need to, um, to pre-shrink it because it's polyester, it, it's not going to shrink at all. If you're using the German interfacing, which is 100% cotton, you do need to pre-shrink it. And the way you do that is just immerse the um, interfacing in warm water and then just hang it up to dry. Don't put it in the dryer, but just hang it up to dry um, and let it dry and it'll be fine. Um, Okay, and I think you can see I've just gone around and I've trimmed these. Um, the one I'm, I'm doing the center front right now, make sure you don't trim off the fold. That would not be good. And um, for the curved um, parts here, I'm just going to eyeball it. And if um, that bothers you and you would want to you know, be more precise, you can um, get your ruler and um, measure that um, half inch off of there. Um, and I'm not actually, as you probably can tell, getting a full half inch as I'm eyeballing it here. 
but that's okay. We're just, as I said, trying to reduce some of the bulk. So before we um, interface the pieces, the very first thing we want to do, and if you're going reading your pattern as we go along, which I hope you're doing, you'll see that the very first um, direction is to stay stitch your neckline. And the reason for that is this particular neckline is cut on the bias and we don't want it stretching at all. So the very first thing we're gonna do before um, we start playing around with this piece is to stabilize that neckline so it doesn't um, stretch on us. And the way you do that is set your machine for regular straight stitch, use your regular machine foot. You're gonna start at the shoulder and you're going to stitch all the way to the edge, back tacking at the beginning and at the end. And I'm going to stitch with a third of an inch seam allowance because we want um, this particular stitching, it's going to remain in the dress and it's gonna sit there in that seam allowance preventing any um, stretching. And you're gonna do this on both back pieces and on the bodice front piece. You're also going to do it on both back lining pieces and the lining of the bodice front. And there you go, and it's as simple as that. Now on the um, bodice front. Let me show that to you because it's a little bit different. You're actually going to start at the shoulder, like I just did on the back, stitch to the center front, back tack, stop and cut your thread. Then go to the other shoulder and again come into the center front. And that um, again is to help prevent stretching. Um, would you really notice that much of a difference on this fabric? Probably not. If I did it all in one, you know, one continuous um, stretch on a more delicate fabric, it certainly could make a difference. Just flip it over because I like to sew from this side. And you can do that. It doesn't matter for this um, which side is up. So however you're comfortable sewing is how you want to do it. So here we are at the iron. And as you can see, my piece of interfacing is smaller than um, the fashion fabric, and I am interfacing the fashion fabric, not the lining. Um, first thing is dial down the heat on your iron, especially if you're using the um, French fuse or the um, French baby interfacing or any other kind of knit interfacing. They are polyester, and if you have the iron all the way up on cotton, they will melt to your iron and make a mess. Um, I have my um, pressing cloth, which I have soaked in water and I've wrung out, and I'm just going to lay it over the whole thing. And then I'm just going to go around, and notice I'm not ironing, I'm pressing for about 10 seconds in each spot, and I'm just going to move. across um, my bodice this way. Remember for that um, pressing cloth, it can just be a piece of muslin or cotton, um, an old man's handkerchief, you know, nothing fancy. Just, um, mine happens to be silk because a friend gave it to me. 
um, thank you, Ton, which is wonderful, um, because the advantage of that is you can see through it. And now I'm just smoothing it out. And there, that is all there is to it. Now, don't try peeling the interfacing off at this point, let it dry. Um, if you have it in the wrong place for some reason, that is how you get it off. If you um, get it hot and sticky again, you'll be able to pull it off. Now on the back, if you are not interfacing the whole bodice, you do need to interface it with these one inch strips of interfacing because the button placket area needs some support. And that um, directions for doing that are in the pattern. I have, the strips are one inch wide and I'm lining them up with that fold line. So remember I made that little notch right here at the top and at the bottom and I'm lining my strip up with that. And my strip is one inch, one half inch, sorry, from the cut edge. And um, that cut edge is my seam allowance. So the strip is gonna be right on um, the edge of the back when we're done. Okay, and so if you're doing the strips, you wanna lay your strip right like that. Take your scissors and cut, trim it inside the seam allowance. Don't leave it hanging over. You're gonna mess up your ironing board um, cover. Mine's messy as it is. I need a new one, but um, <laughs> you really don't want interfacing stuck to it. So trim it at the bottom as well. Put your pressing cloth over the top and um, use your iron to um, attach the strip. Um, I'm going to do the whole thing instead. So let's find the right piece of, that's the wrong, wrong one because you can feel by the way with the fusible interfacing, if you haven't worked with it before, you can, the rough side has the glue on it. And again, over here you'll see that um, this piece is lining up with that cut edge. All right, I am back at the sewing machine. And I've taken um, the front bodice of my little dress and the back bodices and I've pinned them together at the shoulders, right sides together. You can see that's the wrong side of the um, the bunnies on the outside and there's the other wrong side of the bunnies right sides are on the inside we've pinned the shoulders and I'm going to just use a straight stitch and my half inch seam allowance and I am going to sew those um, shoulders together back tacking at the front I'm not going to stitch over my pins And you do want to make sure that you trim your um, thread tails as you go along. It's just a good habit to get into. I'm going to do those with both shoulders um, of the bodice of the fashion fabric. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing um, with both shoulders of my lining. Now after I finished stitching my shoulders together, I went to the ironing board because remember we always iron our seams open. So I ironed them flat to set the stitches and then pushed that seam open and I ironed my seam flat. And I did that with both um, the fashion fabric and with the lining. The last thing we're gonna talk about today is how to attach um, the various embellishments. So I'm going to go through each one because they are a little bit different. If you're using the ruffle, um, if you remember, I had you mark the center front of the ruffle, and of course we made a little clip in the bodice at center front, and you're going to line those two up and pin it. And then you're going to take the finished edges and line them up with the center back notch. So not the fold line, which is the first one, but the second notch in, which is your center back. And you're gonna line the edge right up um, with that center back line. 
on both sides and pin it. Then just work your way around pinning um, the ruffle all around the neck. If you need to, use your two basting threads to pull, gather the ruffle some more. If it's too tightly gathered, just ease it. Okay, so that you, um, so that it lies uh, just nice and flat. Get it how you want it. You want it lining right up with um, your the, those two cut edges really even. And you wanna, once you get it um, sort of so that it's the right length, you want to adjust your gathers so they're evenly distributed. This is the time to um, fiddle a little bit and make sure you get it nicely laid out. You're not gonna have really another opportunity. Okay, okay. Once you have that all pinned um, and everything is lining up nicely, you're gonna go to the machine and you're gonna use your regular stitch length. You're gonna start right here at the edge of the ruffle, back tack, and do a half an inch seam allowance, sewing the whole ruffle down. That means you're going to be stitching in between those two gathering threads, and that will um, result in nice, even gathers on your ruffle. Once you've stitched that down, take a good look at it. If there's something that looks, you know, doesn't look nicely gathered, or maybe the ruffle got caught up in there, or your back isn't lying straight, that's where you get your seam ripper. You take out a few stitches and you just stitch that section again if you need to. Now I'm not actually gonna stitch the ruffle on because I'm gonna use the edging. But um, So if you have any questions about the ruffle, just shoot them to me and I will be glad to answer them. Okay, here's my scallop edging attached to the neckline. And as you can see, my edging is um, extending beyond the raw edges. I'm, I've pinned all the way around, as you can see. Um, I'm going to stitch it straight on using a half inch seam allowance, and I'm going to stitch from raw edge all the way around to raw edge, and then I'm going to trim my um, scalloped edging even with that raw edge so a little bit different than the ruffle if you're having you know a little bit of, of um, what do I want to call it you know it's not completely lying flat that's okay it's going around a raw edge that bias will work for you I promise we'll be trimming it down what you want to make sure though is that it's flat where you're going to be stitching so I'm not stitching up here I'm going to be using that half inch seam allowance and stitching along here and that's where I have to make sure it's lying flat. So just use a lot of pins, use a binding clip if that would help you more and um, get that edging lying all the way around in a really um, nice um, semicircle, and then stitch it down using that half inch seam allowance. I'm at the sewing machine and I'm stitching this in place with that half inch seam allowance and I'm going slow <laughs> and I just want to let you see that because this is um, going to create the guideline for your next step and so you're not just stitching the edging on but you're also creating kind of the the line you're going to follow for um, doing the whole neckline together. I'm making sure my raw edges line up. I'm following that half inch seam allowance and I'm slowly stitching it in place. And this is um, what you want to do no matter which of the embellishments you are putting on. And I'm just turning this over now that it's stitched on and I'm trimming that edging even with the back. And we'll do that at both um, sides.
again, if there was something that you see isn't sort of lying flat and doesn't want to behave, take out a few stitches, restitch that part, and make sure you've got it um, looking good and everything lying flat. Okay, our last embellishment is piping. And remember, I told you you could pipe the armholes as well as the neckline. So since I've stitched my um, scalloped edging onto the neckline, I'm going to show you how to pipe the armholes. So um, I've got my, um, I'm just lining my wrought edges up, right sides together of my piping. And I'm using binding clips for this. You can use pins. And I'm just bringing it around. Getting it to lay straight. And I'm going to go from raw edge to raw edge. So now if you're putting this on the um, neckline, you would do the exact same thing. Let me Get it so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, raw edge to raw edge. And then again, and I'm the only difference now when I stitch this is I'm going to use my piping foot and put um, put this piping right in the groove. Again, if you don't have a piping foot, you would use your zipper foot and go right up um, next to that um, that stitching. Now if you um, made piping, you'll remember that I told you when you were stitching not to get as close to um, the piping as possible with your stitching. So hopefully you didn't get as close as you could and you can now, when you go to stitch this, go one needle notch over and stitch a little bit closer. And that'll help make sure that this original stitching line doesn't show. If you can't get closer, then that's fine. Stitch exactly on top of the original line of stitching. And again, you're going to go slowly because you're, um, you're creating the stitching line that you're going to follow in the next step. Okay, and now here's um, the bodice with the um, piping pinned to the neckline. So just one thing to remember as you are attaching your piping, when you're doing this, you are putting right sides together. When we completely finish this, it will get turned like this. I'll show you over here where I've already stitched it like this. So this is the side that's going to um, show. So if it makes a difference to you, if one side looks better than the other, remember the finished right side is the one you're putting down against um, the bodice, not the one you see here. Okay, I'm back with um, my piping stitched on. I'm going to cut it even with this. Um, with the side seam allowance because I'm this is the um, armhole and there's one last thing you need to do so we don't want this bulk of the piping in our seam allowance when we sew this together so here's where you get those tweezers and you get in there and yes this can be a little fussy but you get hold of that piping cord with your tweezers. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes my fingernails work better than the tweezers. Aha, there I go. Got it. and you pull it and you just you want to get at least a half an inch and snip it off and then pull it back in and you want to err on the side of getting more out than less so that that seam allowance is um, 
not going to have that piping in it. Especially if you're doing this at the underarm. You really don't want that bump at the underarm. That's something that your, your daughter can tell you, oh, mommy, it doesn't feel good there. So you want to make sure that you get that out. On the piping video, I told you that you could use both piping and the edging on your neckline if you wanted to. And so I want to show you how to do that. I already have my neckline piped and I'm now putting raw edges together um, and clipping the um, scalloped edging to my neckline. I'm also putting right sides together. So look at your edging and decide which side of it you like it better. There's not a right or wrong answer, but you probably do have a preference. And put the one that you like better face down. So you're putting the right side of the fabric, fa the right side of the fashion fabric, and the side of the edging that you like better um, back to back. Because when this is stitched, what's gonna happen when we're done, Hopefully you can see it is it's going to look like that all right that's going to be your finish um, the edging is going to um, stand up um, above um, the neckline okay and I'm piping and you see I chose to do it with um, the fashion fabric just to give again a little bit of more of a finish so it's totally up to you. You can do just the edging and skip the piping, or you can do um, the piping and then as well as the edging. So here is my um, bodice with um, the piping and the scalloped edging applied, and that's what it'll look like once um, the seam, we're done, the seam allowances are turned um, this way. Um, this is fussy <laughs> so if you um, are a beginner I really encourage you to just pick one of the embellishments don't try to both pipe and put the scalloped edging on the neckline just pick one of them so your homework for um, until our next lesson is to um, interface your um, bodice um, get your shoulders sewn together and then apply to the neckline whichever of the embellishments that you're going to be working with, um, whether you're going to use the um, uh, scalloped edging, the piping, or the ruffle. Or if you don't want to do any of those, then you are done once you have the shoulders sewn on your bodice. And I will um, see you um, with lesson five when we will finish um, our neckline. Happy sewing.